Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the MTG Goldfish Podcast, episode 126, your weekly podcast covering everything Magic the Gathering related. You can find us on Google Play, iTunes, mtggoldfish.com, and now on YouTube. Joining me, as always, the hosts, uh, Chaz, is, and joined by Richard, the owner of MTG Goldfish. What's up, Richard? Hey, guys. What's going on? What is up? Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, our resident jank brewer and all-around content creator. Seth, what is up? What's up, guys? Oh, my God, what a crazy week it's been. I swear, this so is the much. craziest week I can remember since I've been covering Magic. Yeah, this, it was a lot. Uh, Chaz, as always, joining you, uh, con- all-around content creator, focusing on the financial side. So just kind of breaking things down, we're going to do two casts, one of which we have everything's official, and then we decided to dedicate another cast, um, <laughs> as Seth t- just mentioned, a lot of stuff, uh, unforeseen stuff also happened. So that's mainly going to be focusing on the Ixalan stuff and everything that happened with that. So um, again, this is all official, and then we devoted a cast to the Ixalan leaks, and if you want to listen to that, we that's why we spaced it out. You're welcome to, to talk about, or, you know, comment, talk about it, listen to it, uh, but we wanted to kind of space those out. So... Two and one this week, uh, so gentlemen, let's just kind of strap in and uh, let's get going here. So we have Hour of Devastation, official stuff from Wizards, so uh, everything's on the table here. Uh, we will get through some mechanics. We have Eternalize, Afflict, uh, Out of Combat Exert, uh, Desert Matter stuff, um, and then we're going to talk some individual s- cards. Uh, and then we have just the announcements that have went on throughout the week, um, because it was a week full of actual announcements and then you know the excellent stuff happened and then we'll get to some fish mail so uh yeah a lot of stuff we're gonna try to hit it we're gonna hit everything uh so let's just jump into hour of devastation what did you wait wait, wait you forgot before the most we go to next thing. standard this standard etherworks marvel band you know it was like so much stuff i totally <laughs> forgot about that lost the shuffle <laughs> lost no the more marvel shuffle. i'm oh, sorry so awesome yeah. No more Marvel. Uh, We kind of went back and forth about that one, so let's just take a few minutes. um, Because myself and Richard, I vividly remember saying nothing would happen. Seth was the only one leaning towards Marvel being banned. Uh, Just, you know, general thoughts about Marvel being gone. I can't believe this. They they're trigger happy. Like when when the first banning came in Standard with Emrakul, we're like, this is the slippery slope where bannings become the norm. And three bannings later, here we are. Like, did Marvel really need to get banned? Like, is the metagame really healthy? I don't know, but it's just just so much churn. And confidence in Standard is is heavily damaged, I think. So, I don't know. I, like, I played, I played three leagues the week before uh, Marvel was banned on Magic Online, and I didn't run into Marvel once. And, like, I, I didn't, like, it was so weird. It was all, like, blue-red control and weird stuff, right? So, so I don't know. I personally didn't see an issue with it, but it's, it's worrying that they're using the ban hammer every single time standard is not ideal, and chances are standard will never be ideal. So, hopefully, this is the last one. They've cleared out all of the mistakes and we get no more bannings i like the old days of just you know do not ban unless it's jace the mind sculptor right so like all of these cards are on the same power level as jace the mind sculptor apparently so so i don't know i hope we're done and over with i hope we can move on and forget about this chapter in our lives so i want to just move on uh i i think it was a good decision so i think that's for two reasons first off it was becoming clear that attendance was suffering. And Marvel is probably the most obvious or likely reason for that. Like, the standard GPs we had a couple of weeks ago were pretty lacking in attendance. I don't know, maybe people were saving their GP equity for Vegas or something, but attendance was suffering. And the thing with Marvel is, it was going to be in the format for so long. It's not like it was going to rotate in September. I could imagine Wizards just, like, biting the bullet and being like, all right, it's going to suck this summer, but it's going to be gone soon enough. And it combos with any big thing. Like, yeah, Ulamog's going to be gone, but it's not like they're not going to print more 8-drops and 7-drops in future Magic sets. And I think that the the dislike of Marvel by the community and by players was so intense that Wizards figured, 
we're either going to have to deal with this constant grumbling, every set release, every standard for the next 18 months or whatever it is, or we just, it, it's horrible, but we just do it now, get it done with, move on. So I'm glad that they they did it now instead of dealing with everyone being upset all summer and then having them ban it anyway this fall or whenever. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very surprised, so I'm with you, Richard, um, at the the other end, I guess I've been kind of consistent this whole time in terms of all of these bannings and saying it would have to get worse before it gets better in terms of them actually banning cards. Uh, I do think ultimately I lean towards Seth, and I think we all kind of agreed, just we were, you know, Richard and I were just kind of shocked that they did it this early, but it does actually make sense because it, it just goes back to what we've been talking about in previous podcasts where all these new sets come out and you know you just look gloss over every set and you're like, oh, well, here's a new thing for Marvel to do. Like, hope everyone enjoys Marvel doing this new overpowered thing, this set. So it, it's kind of like that birthing pod, I guess, reasoning for, for modern where it was, it was just coming down to a design uh, aspect where do we just ban the you know, crazy stuff you can do with Marvel, or do we just ban Marvel? And I, and I just think it's going to be around for so long, and it's just one of those cards. I mean, Energy was already kind of parasitic, and that was just, I think, way too too good of a card. So, I mean, for all the reasoning we discussed, uh, I'm not super surprised. Just didn't think they would do it this soon. Yeah, but hours coming around the corner, they can print hate. Like, I don't know. I think it's just a kind of like a of falling out of today's climate. Like, guaranteed, if Innistrad uh, was released today, uh, stuff would be banned. Like, Nefalia Drown Yard, probably banned. Uh, Primeval Titan, probably banned. Pack Rat, probably banned. Like, they're just as equally oppressive to the metagame, but I think back then there wasn't such a large community of players complaining and moaning and they didn't track FNM attendance the same way and stuff like that. Whereas, like, guaranteed, if those sets were released today, it'd be like, well, I played, you know, an eight-hour game and I cast zero spells and my opponent milled me. You know, does anyone agree with me? You know, like, yeah. opponent just played one pack rat and I died. Right? Like, stuff like that. Like, uh, I don't know. I think it's just, there's just too much, too many people complaining and talking now that everything looks overly dramatic and then Wizards kind of just, you know, their hand is forced and they got to do something. Yeah. Well, I think the band cultures. Oh, uh, go ahead, Seth. I was just going to say, you're probably right to some extent, but I think Wizards did it to themselves. Like, Hmm. heading into the Smuggler's Copter, Reflector Mage, and Merkle banning, no one had an expectation of cards getting banned in Standard. But that banning was so major and so weird where you're like, Reflector Mage, really? That's in the same category as like Memory Jar and these busted cards of Magic's (laughs) history that I think that created the ban culture or at least kicked it up into overdrive. So I think Wizards is the reason we are where we are now. Oh, no. It's definitely been around for a long time. They just never acted on it. So people would just talk about it but never, you know, they only really ever had to act like one time in the last x or so years so as i think richard was definitely onto something as more people continue to play and as the player base continue to grow and people are just like you know what like these cards are super good i don't want to play against this anymore and you know ban it or i'm not going to like standard anymore and i think richard's right i mean it kind of just forced their hand there i mean because there's certainly cards in between jason mind sculptor and now that certainly would be banned now for sure but people were complaining about even before that. Yeah, and last point, I think Seth has a really good point, because before the bar of banning was Jace the Mind Sculptor yeah. or, like, Stoneforge Mystic, now we can be, is this as oppressive as Reflector Mage? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, sure, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. it needs to go, you know? Is it as oppressive as Smuggler's Copter? Like, these cards were just efficient. They weren't, like, crazy, right? So now kind of the the bar for banning is very low. Whereas, you know, you're not going to get that many Jace the Mind Sculptors in Standard. No, certainly not. And, I mean, again, I mean, even you look back not too long ago, Ivan Flock would have made a huge case for why Sphinx's Revelation should have got banned. So, I mean, there's certainly points uh, between then and now, but Richard's absolutely right. I mean, the bar is so low. I mean, we might, we might see it in the future. We really might. All right, let's go to the yep. future Hour of Devastation. <laughs> yes. 
uh, not too far future. in the future, not x <laughs> just just like tomorrow. <laughs> the hour okay. of devastation. Yeah. <laughs> Spoilers kicked off at Grand Prix Vegas. Uh, we got a couple cards with mechanics. We didn't get too many new cards. We got all the invocations. Uh, we got a one of the old gods, which we'll talk about. But mechanics-wise, uh, we have Eternalize. Uh, there's a cost that's kind of like Embalm. You get a copy of the creature that you exile from your graveyard, but except this time, it's a 4-4 black zombie human. So its power and toughness changes, but its abilities and name remains the same. So that's Eternalize. We have Afflict, which is basically uh, when the creature becomes blocked, it does X damage to the player. So kind of like pseudo unblockable. Uh, you can now exert things out of combat. So there are cards that you can just tap and exert them and then they do something. And uh, we have the Desert Matters sub-themes. They revealed a whole bunch of uh, deserts and then a bunch of commons and uncommons that, you know, when they enter the battlefield, if you have a desert, does X, Y, Z. So, so those are the new mechanics. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the cards. So to much fanfare on the GP Vegas stream, they uh, <laughs> revealed the Scorpion God. They chiseled it out of a sand monument, but they couldn't even really do it. They had to get a shovel with like multiple people to dig it out. Uh, but uh, one second, I gotta pull up the Scorpion God. That so was the Scorpion that was God so is brutal. The old God. So it has no name because they're forgotten. That's why it's called the Scorpion God instead of, you know, an actual name. Three black, red, legendary creature god. It's a mythic. It's a 6-5. Whenever a creature with a minus one, minus one counter on it dies, draw a card. One black, red, put a minus one, minus one counter on another target creature. When the Scorpion God dies, return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. So just really quickly, um, <clears throat> in the article released today, all of the Forgotten go Gods will have a combination of Bolas' colors, and they will all be formatted this way. Wait, they will have the Return Clause, an Activated Clause, and a Static Clause. Okay, so let's start with this. Does this feel like a god to you? No, because it got wrecked by Bolas. <laughs> it's forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> it's not indestructible, right? I mean, no. I think... The card's good, but well, it's there's no there's no drawback. There's no you got to have this much devotion or you got to be one card in hand. It's just like eh, I'm a big six five. You can play me in any deck you want to. So it <laughs> it's weird to not have a drawback. I think it makes the god way stronger than any of the past gods. Just well, uh, the drawback it, is it sucks, right? <laughs> like it, its its abilities aren't as strong as the other gods, or it's not as undercosted as the other gods. Its drawback is it's, like, kind of vanilla. It's like a normal creature. Yeah, I mean, and it still is kind of indestructible. But, I mean, it costs a lot of mana, but unless you Declaration Stone it or cast out it, it is, it's coming back to the hand so you can play it again. So it does have that kind of, like, pseudo-indestructibility. Yeah. It's, it's pseudo, it pseudo has, like, removal protection. I, I don't think it, like, it doesn't feel like a god in terms of the arch like the creature type, but... I think they were kind of going with the whole flavor of these were forgotten and uh, they don't have any kind of following, so maybe that's kind of why they're not formatted the same because no one actually knows these gods. So there's no, <laughs> there's no one to you know worship these gods. So I don't know, but uh, I can tell you one thing. I mean that's insane in terms of uh, commander and EDH, where essentially you never have to pay a commander tax, um, sans you know getting it removed. But um, I didn't see. The, I don't see the other ones. Assuming that they're all five mana, um, I kind of like these. Uh, at least the draw. Wait, the no drawback. I think is the huge appeal where you could you can just play this as a giant creature and it's pretty hard to remove and it has you know abilities that synergize well with itself and each other. From what the article said, um, I don't know. How, I guess <laughs> they're assuming you're going to play all of these in the same deck. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to work, but um, I think that I like these as like a one-off creature, but I do agree, Seth, that it, it is kind of, I don't, I wouldn't like, you know, wow, this is a great god-like card to add to this long line of, you know, these god cards. Yeah, it just feels weird the way it's formatted 
and maybe it's just that my expectation of gods, like, my initial expectation was gods were indestructible enchantment creatures. Then after Amonkhet, I was like, all right, well, maybe they're not all enchantments, but they're indestructible. That's like, what makes a god a god? Is there There's something there. So this doesn't seem to hit any of the traditional marks of what I think of when I think of gods and magic. But I do think the card is actually pretty good. 6-5 five versus 5 is not bad. The abilities aren't overpowered, but you can pick off little creatures. We've seen Liliana make great use of the ability to give something negative two, negative one, and this gives something a negative one, negative one counter is repeatable. So I think it's not bad. I could imagine this being like the top end or part of like a Jund mid range deck, a black red mid range slash control deck. So I don't think it's a bad card. And I also like that you can loop them. Like you can attack with one, play a second copy, legend rule yourself, you get the other one back to your hand. So you can get some sneaky value there as well. All right, are you guys ready? You're all recording a new one. All right. Uh, yeah, I think I think the card is okay. I don't think it's gonna be that standard playable. It's like a five man a six five that does nothing when it enters the battlefield, and you gotta pay a lot of mana to kill something unless they're just like little dorks. So I'm more excited for EDH because you can just keep bouncing it to your hand, and you don't have the commander tax. Plus, you can make a Scorpion King deck. So. I'm all for EDH. And I like the flavor of the gods. I like that they're not really on the same power level as the original gods because these are forgotten gods, fallen gods, or whatever. So they're, they're tier 2 gods, and their cards reflect that. So I'm fine with that. Uh, so next spoiler, we have Hour of Revelation. Three white, white, white. Sorcery. Our revelation costs three less to cast if there are ten or more non-land permanents on the battlefield. Destroy all non-land permanents. Yeah, this was interesting. And it was interesting to even see it be cast on on stream. It is a heavy investment, but already the commander community was going pretty wild about this card. And for good reason. I mean, this is... Uh, it's not too often you get three mana wraths, uh, especially these days. So, I like it in that regard. It might be a little tough to, to have this be three mana in standard, though. Oh, you're never... I, I have one out of yeah. every hundred games or something. I think it's very <laughs> unlikely that you're going to gonna pay it uh, three, four in standard. Good news is, even at six mana, I think it's pretty good. It gets vehicles. Yeah. It gets planeswalkers. It deals with... All the stuff that Fumigate and more traditional Wraths don't deal with, and those were the cards that made Wraths not great in Standard, like Wrathing and then dying to Heart of Kirin and Gideon just doesn't really work, but this takes care of the problem. I don't know if you can jam it as a 4 of, because it's so expensive, but I think it'll see Standard play, just because it does get rid of so many hard-to-deal-with cards. Yeah, Planar Cleansing is very playable now, I think. So I think this will be played as a 1 or 2 of in certain decks, and in EDH, this this is a staple. This is every single white deck will play this. It's like Blasphemous Act. It's so good, but it hits everything. So three mana, wipe everything off the board is pretty good. So bonkers EDH card. So I really like this card. Yeah, I agree with the one or two of that. I think paying one more is exactly where you want to be, like you said, Seth, to get rid of just everything that you couldn't get rid of before. And... I don't even think Fumigate, like, the mana cost was why Fumigate wasn't played, if, if you want to look at evaluating these cards. It's just it didn't get rid of the stuff you needed it to get rid of. But um, you might actually be able to sneak another copy of this in the sideboard if Zombies continues to be a deck, because I think you might be able to get to that uh, pretty easily in that matchup, at least. Yeah, they do I, kind of regurgitate a lot of stuff out there. I mean, it's also super sweet against the Teamer Energy decks, which have seemed to have kind of like picked off where Marvel was because it gets all the Planeswalkers. They're playing all those Chandras and just so many Planeswalkers, and getting two or three Planeswalkers with this is that's a lot of value for even at six mana. All right, next card we have an Eternalized card, Dream Stealer, Tuna Black. 1-2, Creature, Human, Wizard. Menace, whenever Dream Stealer deals combat damage to a player, that player discards that many cards. Eternalize, 4 black, black. And like we said earlier, Eternalize is Embalm. So you get this Dream Stealer with the same abilities, except it's a 4-4 four, four black zombie. 
Okay, I gotta say it. I'm sorry. I, I Eternalize is way worse than I like even could have imagined it. Could be. Me- Mega Bomb. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I. You Mega know what? Morph, no. Even Mega Morph was better than this. Like I like Eternalize. I don't understand. What's, what's like, maybe, the beef with Eternalize? No, yeah, it, it's cool, but I feel like you know we're getting to. You know what R- or Seth was talking about? Uh, I can't remember what card you were talking about, but it's like your or mechanic you were talking about. I know it was recent, but it just seems like you're paying an awful lot of mana just to get a four four. You know, out of the deal. I, I mean, how is this any way like, better than Embalm? I mean, it's just a four four, and that's really it. And they there wasn't really any reasoning. I was why a four four. I just don't get because it. you get upgraded. It only works if you're small, I guess. <laughs> but like, <laughs> when you're involved, you're just restored to your crappy, you know, mana dork stats. But when you're eternalized, you become a four four. <laughs> so, so uh, I don't know. But what do you think of the card? But it it's pretty, it all right. It's pretty bad. But <laughs> yeah, I we I underrated like aftermath and the other graveyard mechanics. So the fact that it is two cards in one and you have that natural card advantage makes it better than it looks but the front half body is just a two a one two it dies to shock it's three mana it's just the body's not good enough on the front half to make it be a good card i don't think yeah normally i'm drawn to cards like these mostly because they're always like penny stocks (laughs) uh, (laughs) uh like near bulk cards but uh i think that's where it's like destined because I, I think you're right. It's just the front side is just not good enough to even – wait. The etern- and I'm not trashing Eternalize. Like, I, I think it'll be fine. I just kind of didn't get the whole thing around it and in my head. Like, they could have went so many different ways with it. I, I just don't think this is a good Eternalize card. Yeah, I think this is a bad card, but it has a lot of potential to be sneaky good. Like, it's a must-kill threat. Right, if it if you play it and you get hit by it, you're probably gonna start losing. Uh, it has menace. If there's a pump spell in this, then it's game over. Right, if you play this against a control deck, uh, they can't kill it, and you Titan Strength it or whatever giant growth we have in standard right now. That's four cards you're discarding. The game is over. So it is a must kill, except it's easy to kill. <laughs> like a shock takes it. It has menace. It can dodge things. So I think there's potential for this card. It could be sneaky good. Like, a pump spell just t- kind of, like, does you in. So oh, you yeah. can build, like, I mean, Infect or something, right? Where, like, the card kind of <laughs> sucks, but, like, if you get comboed, it's over. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, I can uh, I can see that angle, maybe, yeah. I mean, just compared to, like, a, a Hypnotic Spectre, which is the same amount That's of where mana. I was going you get a 2-2 two, two flyer, the discard is random. It, it feels bad compared to old versions of itself, yeah. and I'm not, I'm not sure that Eternalize makes up for that. Like, I don't know if the six mana get it back as a 4-4 makes up for how much worse it looks than Hypnotic Spectre. All I'm saying is a giant growth <laughs> is four man, four cards. That's like a mull to three. Like, tell me if you're going to win that game, right? Like, it's over. So it's uh, it's pretty much yeah. a, must, a must kill. There's no way you're going to survive if you get hit and there's a combo with this. But, but then you're playing Pump Spells and Dream Stealer in your deck. That's the downside. It's like one of your commander decks, Richard, where it, it looks scary, but you're drawing all skeletons or something. I am going to make a commander deck with this and kill you with this. You're going to draw, like, 50 cards with a Reliquary Tower. You're going to feel so smart, and I'm going to hit you with this. <laughs> but I don't know. Standard in fact. Here we go. Against the odds. Write it down. We're doing it. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. This could happen. Oh. Uh, all right, all right. We'll talk about, like, other shadily good cards here. <laughs> Oketra's <laughs> Last Mercy. One white, white. Sorcery. Your life total becomes equal to your starting life to- total. Lands you control. Don't untap during your next untap step. Potentially gain 19 mm. life in standard with this card. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Good or bad? How much life gain do you need <laughs> to for life gain to be a card? <laughs> uh, I I kind of like this cycle, but I feel like if we were kind of bashing Bantu's Last Reckoning so hard, well, I don't understand. Maybe this is 
something? I don't know. I think this is enough life gain. The problem is you got to time walk yourself to cast it. So I don't know if you consider you're skipping two turns to gain that amount of life. If it was just that text without the land thing, I think that would definitely be enough life gain that this would be playable. Definitely in sideboards. It might still be sideboard playable. It's really good against burn if you don't get skull cracked like in modern. Or the problem against a lot of standard decks though is the damage is coming from creatures. So yeah, you gain a bunch of life, but then your opponent just beats you down with all their creatures and you lose all that life back immediately. So I don't know. Yeah, this this could be good because it's not a purely defensive card. Like say you're racing someone, you hit them, you catch his last mercy. Like, you're not wiping the board and hoping nothing happens. They can play more creatures and you just hit them again. Like, say you have, like, a Delver deck, and you're hitting them in the air. It doesn't matter that they have big creatures on the ground and they get an extra turn. You're just gonna use that 19 life as a, like, a super fog and kill them. Or in Modern, you know, a Burn player gets you down to one, and you somehow play this without dying. Like, it doesn't matter if they take another turn and have all their mana. Like, they're not gonna deal you 20 damage again. So it's okay to take the turn off. So I think this is playable in modern. I think if you wanted core Firewalker, you might actually play a Catcher's Mercy. It dodges Skullcrack. It dodges a Tarka's Command. That actually doesn't work. No, it doesn't, oh, it doesn't. It doesn't dodge Skullcrack. Wait, the comprehensive no. rules, if you reset yeah. your life total, you're actually you're gaining, gaining life up to that yeah. life total. All right, total. garbage. Sorcery yeah. speed, not modern playable. <laughs> <laughs> Why would they word it like this? Oh... Uh, it's, oh, I think it's just so much Andrew. confusion. Yeah. yeah. Skullcrack actually stops this. Useless. Yeah. I don't like it. Maybe standard. <laughs> Maybe for racing. but Maybe standard. Oh, yeah. And, and I, do, I do think you had a point there, Richard, where it's a good racing tool. Um, I don't know how many, <laughs> how many instances you're going to get into where you need this because then Oketra's Last Mercy still has to be in your deck. But um, – I could see it. Yeah, but it's really bad when you're behind. More, yeah. So therefore, you're oh, probably yeah. not going to play it. I can see this thing blowing people out in limited, though. Where oh, you're, yeah. like, racing each yeah. other. And you're like, well, Oketra's last mercy. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, so. Wow, Richard's opinion changed fast. <laughs> <laughs> Dodging Skullcrack is a huge deal. But yeah. Yeah. if it was instant if it speed, did, it might work. But so they'll just good. kill you now. <laughs> Yeah. No no more. All right. So over the weekend, they released 22 invocations. So we have three left. Uh, so two more will be gods, right? No, wait. One will be a god. How many gods are there? No. T- three? I no, there's, there's only two left. There's two left. That's it. The two so gods. two gods there's left. 24. And the last card is either Cruel Ultimatum or Nicol Bolas. Uh, probably, right? I think there's 24, isn't there? Oh, there's only 24? Yeah, there's 24. There's 54 total for this okay. block. Oh, um, so there's not even a Nicol have... Bolas or Cruel Ultimatum? What fail is this? Then it's definitely <laughs> just two more gods. That's it, yeah. so two gods. Yeah. Okay, but let's list off all, all of the cards. Sure. Um, if I knew what they were. Thought Seize, hold on, hold Armageddon. On, hold on. <laughs> there, there's an oh, order. You got it? <laughs> okay. There's go an ahead. order. I just got to pull it up. Wait, how... Uh, there's an order? Well, I'm going to go alphabetical so that people... Oh, okay. <laughs> or, oh, okay. you know, something, right? So <laughs> Armageddon, sense, yeah. Avatar of Woe, Blood Moon, Boil, Capsize, Choke, Damnation, Desolation Angel, Diabolic Edict, Doomsday, Forbid, Lord of Extinction, No Mercy, Omniscience, Opposition, Shatterstorm, Slaughter Pact, Sunder, The Scorpion God, Thought Seize, Threads of Disloyalty, and Through the Breach. And that was very difficult to read because I'm reading it right off the cards themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't tell what the text says. Uh. So, we have some good ones. Thoughtseize, Blood Moon. And then we have some questionable ones like Capsize, Avatar of Woe. Uh, oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa. That's not a questionable. Whoa, Avatar of... <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, not whoa, like in W O E, whoa, like W A H. So, <laughs> whoa, there. Are you going to be happy opening an avatar of whoa? Okay, no. Uh, well, only me personally, because uh, this is kind of just one of those cards that have been with me for a long time. And my mother actually really loves Avatar of Woe, the, the <laughs> art from RK Post. Okay. I was actually really disappointed that I, this could have been like the crown jewel of like. <laughs> An awesome Avatar of Woe collection I could have put together for her, but 
I just don't think I can like showcase the human centipede as like the. Uh, <laughs> I mean, good. <laughs> The the like the crown jewel of like the collection. I'm sorry. Well, you'd be able that to get really it for like down. five bucks though, so that's sweet. <laughs> yeah, it just can't be the you know the print that I you know crown <sighs> off the collection with. They're they're so bad, and I mean I don't want to bash it too what? hard because wizards wizards basically admitted this, saying we can't do these every set because we don't have enough cards, and we were like, yeah, we told you that in the beginning, Wizards, and you finally got there. <laughs> but, um, so, yeah, they're just, it's not good enough. I'm I'm very thankful that they are not doing Expeditions or Masterpieces in Ixalan. I'm ready for a break. There's just, the chase cards are like Blood yeah. Moon. I love Blood Moon, but it's it's a $30 card that was just reprinted in Thoughtseize. These aren't Foil scalding tarns and wastelands and soul rings and stuff. That's oh, I don't know. I'm pretty disappointed. No, there's a, definitely a few good. Yeah, ones but here. there's 24 and most of them are bad. Mm. The art all looks the same. It's like Nicol Volus destroying something or <laughs> landscape with fiery stuff happening. Like I cannot tell what any of these cards so, are based on the art. But, like I'm sure we could swap around 15 cards and no one would say anything. It's kind of like the counter spells of the last set. Where every card was a counter spell and all of them looked the same. <laughs> so the way they spoiled these, if you missed it, was they put them on the GP Vegas stream and they would show the art during a commercial break and people would guess what it was and then they would zoom out and you'd see what it was after a few minutes. And I swear to God, I guessed Armageddon at like 10 in a row <laughs> before it was finally actually Armageddon because every single one could have been Armageddon, <laughs> I think. You know, I still think they should have kept these well not i mean obviously not you know the masterpiece series and you know condense them to like 10 or something like that but i I can see the point where they they were kind of reaching for some of these um like capsize i mean it is a great card don't get me wrong but i don't i don't i'm not gonna feel too great opening that edh finisher Um, but not worth I mean, much. But I'm, I'm happy <laughs> opening any of them as opposed to... The problem is, it's like, you, you brought this up a, a lot, Richard, and it, it does become true where it's basically just invocation or bust after a while. And I do think we need a break. Um, and if they're going to keep the masterpieces at, like, 24 or 25 in a set, then, yeah, there should be some gaps in between. But I, I liked, actually, most of these as, as compared to, you know, Amonkhet. I thought they looked really nice. Yeah, the art could be interchangeable with a lot of these, and I think that's an issue stemming back all the way from Battle from Zendikar that we even talked about. Like, how many times where they would show a land, you could be like, that's like any land, and they're like, oh, it's Wasteland. They're like, oh, okay, cool. You know, I, I do think that's an issue with these. But, you know, once you do see them, I think it's fine. There's some really good ones here, and overall, maybe just these – are not bad. And I understand there's stinkers in there, but they're, I still think they're pretty good. I mean, Green got completely destroyed this block. I don't know what <laughs> was going on there, but Ugh. I mean, I, I guess we have some nice multicolor cards, but Choke, like seriously, and it doesn't even look like a green card. Like, I, I would have never thought that was Choke. I'm sorry. I but. mean, Having boxes be masterpiece or bust is one thing, Like, but having sure. boxes be masterpiece or bust and having like 80 percent of the masterpieces still being a bust like how do you win there like how can you ever open yeah. a good box if 80 percent of the masterpieces are sunders and chokes and boils and forbids and <laughs> not that i dislike those cards i play them and i like them but they're like 10 cent cards you, you gotta like, start cracking pallets real... you can't crack cases uh. now you gotta go up one more to yeah. make sure you get enough blood moons in your... <laughs> that that was like that was like kind of the the last draw in terms of they have to ch- take a break from this because they are reaching for a lot of these. But I mean, I'd still be okay with a slaughter pact, an opposition, diabolic edict. Like some of them are really fine, even though you know I'll bet inexpensive. But I mean, you know, just I, a cap size, like yeah, that's that's like not just, a choke. Just imagine if there were five, and it was thought to seize through the breach, blood moon, damnation, and I don't know. Add in one more good one, like that would at least be exciting. At least then, if you yeah. get lucky enough to open a masterpiece, you know you're going to get a super sweet card. But I just I can't deal with the the feel bad of getting lucky by opening a masterpiece and having it be such a horrible horrible card. Yeah, and, and it, they know EDH and Commander exists. Okay, so. I get you want to 
kind of appeased the entire crowd. But choke, I mean, if that was any other like legitimate <laughs> EDH or commander staple, then I think it would be okay because you can find a place for these cards. And uh, normally a lot of people will, but... Why are you hating on Choke? I don't think anybody's going out to get... (laughs) No, it is, but, I I mean, how many more Commander EDH players would there be that can actually use these than... I I don't think any modern player is going out to get four of these. I mean, maybe the the couple people that were on the stream that had, like, four sleeves on their deck. Don't worry. So there'll be a set that focuses on creatures, and then you'll get all the big, dirty green creatures. (laughs) <laughs> the, like the, the set is I not really so because... you know like rampant growth really it's not really creatures you can't do ramp so like green basically has nothing yeah. so I think green yeah. will get its I mean, fair I... share in a future set that's more conducive nothing, for green yeah nothing against choke and again it's a good card but I mean come on I will say I'm 99% sure that we'll have masterpieces when we return to Dominaria. That just seems yeah. too obvious not to. And I think those could be awesome. Like, if that's executed right, it should be super sweet. So I am excited for some masterpieces, but I'm glad we're taking a break in the next set. All right, speaking Me of too. return... Masterpiece Land of War Elf. Speaking of return to <laughs> Dominaria, let's go through the announcements. So first, sure. let's start with the next standard sets. Ixalan, September 29th, and Rivals of Ixalan, which is the second set in that block. And uh, reminder, we're only talking about official information, but the entire rare sheet was leaked. Uh, so we got a glimpse of all of the cards. And if you don't want that spoiled, uh, that's fine. This cast is safe. Next cast, we'll go into that. So the our secret bonus cast, you can skip if you don't want to <laughs> hear that. But Ixalan, uh, they, they showed an image. It was Pirate Vraska with feathered dinosaurs in the back. <laughs> so, pirates and dinosaurs is the theme of Ixalan. And uh, they're basically the pictures from the old Atlazin uh, pictures we saw a while back uh, when they did the survey. So, Atlazin apparently was renamed to Ixalan. So, we know there's some merfolky person as well. And uh, so, you can take a look at the old packaging. But what do you guys think about Ixalan? Pirates? And dinosaurs is that is magic getting too weird or is this like the perfect thing <laughs> i'm cool with it um i think maybe they just took the old adage of like pirates versus ninjas which is like, like an internet sensation they just you know like, you know what we'll just do pirates and dinosaurs i'm i'm all right i'm cool get with that it. get that podcast um, bingo card ready because hearthstone <laughs> <laughs> hearthstone we hearthstone are has pirates, we're going to has dinosaurs why do we have dinosaurs in pirates all of a sudden that okay. To be I'm fair, kidding, people way. have been asking for a dinosaur set before Hearthstone even came into existence. So I we I, we get to claim this one. And in all fairness, Magic has always had dinosaurs and pirates. They haven't been super focused on. We haven't actually had the creature type dinosaur, but you can't say that like Fungusaur wasn't a dinosaur all the way back to Alpha. Like it is. <laughs> they just called it a lizard. So I'm pretty fine with it. I think it should be interesting and flavorful and. Maybe we can build pirate and dinosaur commander decks? Like, I guess that's what I'm hoping for, is enough support that we'll be able to actually do something with those tribes, which is sometimes sketchy when it's a tribe that hasn't been supported very much throughout the last 25 years. Yeah, and I think this is kind of setting us up for Dominaria, because there's so many different denizens on that plane that we're kind of getting used to going back to there's like all these different creatures and they're all meshed together so i think it's going to be really fun so speaking of which dominaria which is basically a return to dominaria but we've never had a set called dominaria so it's just straight dominaria april 28th the the plane that started everything so if you're not familiar, like Alpha, Beta, all those things were like Dominaria and the original Weatherlight and all that stuff, right? So what do you guys think? And Richard Garfield will be working yep. on it. Is this like the money grab? Is this like <laughs> we're reigning oh, yeah. in, you know, all the old school players oh, yeah. and we're going to appease everything you've ever wanted from like old school magic there was definitely a phone call, Richard. You gotta get under. You gotta get out of retirement. We have. We need you for this one. We had to ban a whole bunch of cards. We we tried the two set block thing. It didn't work. We're down to one set. You need to come back for this. And he's place. like, here, have another mirror mad phantasm. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. But, okay, so th- the last set that Richard w- did work on was original Innistrad. So... Yeah? The bar is being set pretty high. I mean, it's in... Yeah, uh, also original Ravnica, which was also very widely oh, loved. Yeah. Those are the last two oh. sets that he was involved with. So definitely exciting to have him back, and I'm excited for it. I'm Time Spiral is one of my favorite sets because you get all these callbacks to old cards and uh, so forth. So I'm hopeful that Dominaria will be similar. I'm sure it won't be as complex and crazy as Time Spiral, but I'm really excited. They got to reference all this old stuff and update some of that stuff. So I'm really hyped for it. I think speaking of stuff people have asked for, returning to Dominaria, I think is near the top of the list of planes people have asked for. So I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be awesome. I'm super, super excited. I just hope they don't ruin magic forever with this. You know, like as Jace and Gideon touch down in Dominaria and like step over Urza's grave. <laughs> you know, like I, I hope they, <laughs> they get the old feel. The Gatewatch is not here or, you know, like very minimal presence. I hope they amp up the power of standard. Like how sweet would it be to have like a counter spell? You know, kind of like the callback, land destruction. The, the things you think of of old school magic. Like I really hope it's not the Gatewatch just dancing around and it's like battle for Zendikar again. Where you return to a beloved place, but it feels nothing like your beloved place, and you've ruined it forever. <laughs> right? So, big chance for a big win, but big chance for a big miss as well. So, I, I hope they actually got it right. So, wizards, Rich- if you haven't done it yet, for your <laughs> Richard- ma- for your masterpieces, just print alpha borders. You know how sweet that would be. Just do original border masterpieces. Such that an would easy be win. Insane. Or oh, they get yeah. over engineer it and make like illegible cards and <laughs> try to be super fancy <laughs> and everyone's like, Ooh, WTF. So we'll see. I think Mr. Garfield's got this one. Alright, so another thing that players have been asking for since forever a new silver bordered set, Unstable, December eighth, so this year. Uh these the expansion logo is a wrench. And then there is an acorn cut out of it. So contraptions, squirrels, like what do we got here? <laughs> <Could be laughs> What's going yeah. on here? Uh, in... Could be anything, literally. Uh, I first of all, I didn't even realize Merrill was so. I I guess I forgot that he's really into these sets. Um, for me, I think. Uh, I mean, you mentioned something on on Twitter. I think Seth and I. We felt like we talked about this on this podcast at least once. Um, it's awesome. It's cool. I, I, you know, I guess there it needs to exist for a percentage of the player base. I just don't know if I can go through and buy this product. Yeah, I mean that's where I'm at. I'm I am excited for it, but I'm excited for it because I want to see the spoilers, see what jokes they can put on magic cards. Like, I enjoy the unset cards, but I can't imagine, other than maybe opening one for the YouTube channel, I can't imagine just buying and cracking a box of an unset just to do it for fun. Like, it just, that's not for me. But that's fine, because it is for some people. Oh, God. This is the problem that Marl always talks about. Everyone wants an unset, but no one wants to buy it. (laughs) <laughs> and I think yep. I'm in that boat too, right? Like, you want to see the cards, you want to play with it once, but am I going to get a collection of, you know, unstable cards? Am I going to get a couple boxes? Like, probably not, which means it's going to be a poor selling set, no matter, you know, how much everyone likes it, and then we'll never see the fourth, you know, unset, right? <laughs> like, it'll so, be another yeah. another thing that we talk about for the next decade that never happens. So if you so enjoy we, it, buy it, right? Make sure Wizards <laughs> knows you like the set. Yeah. Is there anything they can do to make it worth buying? They'll probably do some crazy Full lands, lands, which I guess would be an appeal. Can they do, like, real masterpieces that are of legal cards? Or, like, is there any way to to make it reach beyond the I mean, we're going to have to see route? a silver-bordered that, masterpieces. Short of... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be interesting, but they're, like, of real cards? Uh, yeah. I, would, I, like, don't, I, I think that'd be weird. I think they might actually have... Yeah. They, it would be hilarious if they made a masterpiece and put it, like, in the main set as a joke. But I, I doubt they would do actual masterpieces. Because, like, who's going to pay for this, right? Who's going to pay the markup for it, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, I mean, other than lands, there's just not much going here. Maybe they just... 
make this a, a limited supply. That would uh, because then that's that's not too terrible. Like you have you have one little you have a wave of this, and, and you kind of alleviate the issues of exactly what Richard and you know you mentioned and Seth that everyone wants it, no one buys it, so there's not that much out there anyway. And then it just we well, just kind what of what if on. instead of limited supply, like half the price? It's like fallen empires. Like yeah, Again, I'll just go buy a box for thirty five dollars because it's so cheap and I'll yeah, play it. Yeah, right? I guess, but still, short of like playing it a couple times, it's literally yeah. nothing you could. Do I would draft this. it multiple I still times. Buy it. Would you not? If it was like thirty five dollars a box, I I still don't think I okay. would. Yeah. The problem is you okay. spend a hundred was... and you play it, and then you have no use for these cards unless you. But you need, like, a dedicated, like, you go into any LGS, like, hey, do you want to get an undraft off? And after, like, two months, like, no one's going to do this. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it'll be, like, the greatest draft format of all time, and that'll save it. I'm sure I mean, when you have fun, to, like, stand and I, and up and I've... cluck like a chicken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was fun, but the novelty does wear off fast. But th- that's just me. I mean, other people really like the, these these sets, and it's for them. So, if, like Richard said, if you want these if you want this, definitely buy it because yeah. if you don't, they're not gonna do it. Or they could go Dominion. They release it as a box set for like twenty bucks. That would actually be pretty that would be Yeah. Fair. Like I think they need to make it cheap. Like, I like they, that they can't idea treat it lot. the same as like a Magic the Gathering expansion because people aren't gonna collect them in the same way. Like they collect them for fun, but you're not trying to collect to build a powerful deck or something like that, right? So Hopefully the yeah. pricing... You know, I really like that idea. ...changes that. All right, next product. We're getting deep down the list of From the Vault themes because we got From the Vault Transform. Uh, November 24th. 15 of the greatest Transform cards of all time. <laughs> and they specified that it's flip cards. So, like, the, the double face yeah. flip cards, not, like, the old Kamigawa Transform cards or whatever. So, so from it's the vault, Jace thank and Huntmaster <laughs> and Delver. Yeah. And that's it? It's Thing of the ice. Yeah. There's like 30 flip cards like, in existence. Why does this product even It's going to be like exist. half of every flip, flip card is going to be It's the good flip set. cards. It's Jace, Huntmaster. You have Arlen Cord probably they'll throw in there because it's a Planeswalker. They'll throw in Thing in the Ice, Delver. And they'll all have, like, different art. I 100% blame Masterpieces. Because you could have had From the Vault Lands, From the Vault Counterspells, From the Vault Destroying Things, From the Vault Hate Cards. From the Vault Counters? Counterspells. Didn't we just get, like, every Counterspell in existence these last two blocks? That's what I mean, right? Because they used them or all in the Masterpieces, sets? there's no more oh, point right, right, right. Okay. From the Vault. So we're down to Transform Cards, apparently. I'm good with it, though. I'm good with that. Uh, Give me Jace Vrin's Prodigy reprint. The Just do it. The only, there it are there going to be the checklist part about cards? It. That is the real question. <laughs> 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 the only good part is MSRP is low enough that it's actually yep. actually going to be fine value. At least it always has been. So even though it's a lacking theme, in my opinion, you're going to pay what the market will support because MSRP is almost always lower than the value of the cards in the set. With right, the, from la- the vaults. Last serious question. How will these curl? Will they just remain straight as both sides curl and counterbalance each other? Will <laughs> will they just rip apart and you end, you end up with like a white blank card because the, the face just literally falls off? Or how, how will these behave? Uh, They just... I don't. I have no idea. Maybe they just curl up like a cinnamon. Like, <laughs> they just implode. <laughs> <laughs> they just disintegrate. <laughs> like a cinnamon s- stick. <laughs> All right. Next. Next supplemental product. Masters twenty five. March 16, 2018. Oh my. Another master set Ooh. to celebrate Magic's twenty fifth year anniversary. How does this differ from iconic masters releasing this year in November twenty seventeen? I don't know. Oh, it's. This is a I, lot of stuff. You can't. My you goodness. Can't, you can't print master sets three months apart from each other. Ooh, I don't. That is a lot. Uh, I'm fine with once a year. I think that's a, a reasonable pace, but that's just. It's overload, and the themes are even. 
from the outside, they seem pretty related. They're just any <laughs> cards do. from any set, like 25th anniversary and iconic. Like those two things are pretty synonymous, or they should be at least. So I don't know. I don't know how they can both be awesome. Okay, or, here's the and, here's the kicker. The three letter code for Masters twenty five is M twenty five. The three letter code for the Ooh. next core set is M nineteen. Meaning <laughs> by twenty twenty five we're not gonna have core sets anymore because they've screwed up their naming once again and there's no way around it. Like why why do they call nice. it M twenty five? Just to confuse everyone? Like what is this? Yeah, I I don't know. I, I, I do. I was kind of confused that they're gonna do that. They're going to do another master sets like this because it's exactly like you said. They seem very interchangeable. I'm sure they'll both be pretty cool. I, I'd have to think if one's going to not be as good, it'll be unfortunately the iconic masters. It's so sorry for everyone going as con, but I, I think the 25 uh, anniversary masters will be really jam packed full of stuff. Yeah, I, I I don't I don't know. I can't even think of like enough good old cards between modern masters, eternal masters. Uh now we have iconic masters and then just masters like I don't yeah, know. Yeah, what's 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 left that's not on the reserve list and hasn't already been reprinted in a masters set? The list is pretty <laughs> short, I think. They're just they're just throwing everything in yeah. there. Tarmogoy Force, Sarah Angel <laughs> Singer Vampire and Sierra <laughs> Shivan <Angel>. Dragon. <laughs> like that, that's, that's got to be iconic masters, right? If not iconic <laughs> masters, masters twenty five. These are like the most iconic these... cards in Magic history. They gotta end up in one of these two sets, right? But who's gonna pay ten dollars a pack to get your core set rares and welcome deck <laughs> rares in a, just because it has an iconic name? Ah. Uh... I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully it's sweet. I'm sure Mana Drain, I guess. There's a few high-value things they can throw in there, but I'm just mostly... I would be fine with both sets if they were split up over two years, but three months is just way too close together. Wait, so they said for sure Iconic Masters will not have reserve list cards, right? Have they ever come yes. out and said Masters 25 won't have reserve list cards? Oh what my. if Masters 25 <laughs> was Black Lotuses, <laughs> Dual Lands, and Moxin? That would be that would awesome, actually make some kind of sense because you know that would actually be a tip at twenty five years of magic history, right? Yeah, I mean, everything they say makes it sound like nothing has changed as far as their their view of the reserve list. So I don't have my hopes up, but that would make sense and be awesome if it happened. Maybe it's like they figured out how to get around the dual land reserve list clause, and you now have like legendary dual lands that gain life on Enter the Battlefield or something, and that's Masters 25. <laughs> but they've never printed just, like, snow versions of every of every reserve list card. Yeah. Snow Moxin, well, Snow Duels. I guess we have, like, literally <laughs> another year to speculate before Masters 25 <laughs> yes. comes out. So lastly, we have a couple supplemental products. Dual Decks, Merfolk versus Goblins. And then we have Explorers of Ixalan, which is some kind of weird multiplayer game. I'm assuming it's similar to like Arch Enemy or something where it's like a box mm -hmm. set and there's something special about it. It's not like a straight uh, dual deck or something like that. So the last two Yeah, things. it's like an out-of-the-box. Eh. I mean, uh, Merfolk vs. Goblins are iconic tribes, but we've already had a Goblins dual deck, which is a little weird. And Explorers of Ixalan, I'm assuming I'm not the target market for it. I'm not even exactly sure what it is, other than it's related to Ixalan. So I don't know. They're not for me, but they're fine, I guess. Some people will probably enjoy them. All right. Any overall thoughts? Do we have too many magic products? Like, there's a lot of products and a lot of releases. Uh, uh, we already talked I'm about not... Masters versus Iconic. Uh, any other thoughts on these? I'm just kind of – I don't think there's a, a, a lot of products. I do think the two master set, sets is a little much, but nothing else seems like out of the ordinary. I mean, we have a From the Vault. We have a dual deck, which they, they do all the time. I think they like this kind of out-of-the-box multiplayer thing like Arch Enemy. They might start – obviously, they're going to try to start doing that a little bit more. Um, I don't know what that entails because we literally know nothing. Uh, I think the biggest takeaway here is them going down to one set – blocks so there's really not like blocks anymore they're just individual standalone sets 
They can come in and you know, cu- you know, jump from story to story as they see fit. And I think they're kind of. I think that made sense I, after the long history of Magic. They kind of conformed down to one set releases because apparently not even two set blocks are working. So uh, this is probably the easiest way for them to achieve what they want to achieve in terms of storytelling, design, and you know yeah. what have you. So I think that's the biggest takeaway. Yeah. Here. Speaking of which, Dominaria has a lot of potential here to be one of those yeah. planes where we stay on for like four sets because there's so much going on. Yeah. Right. But but if we stay on that, you have to remember if we stay on a set for a few sets, it's like a full year of Dominaria, which is fine by me, but. Yeah, yeah um, I mean, that's how we used to do it, though. Yeah, almost. yeah, it is. But, I mean, for me, are there too many products in a broad sense? Probably. But not really, because most of them aren't for me. Like, personally, I care about Ixalan. I care about the Return to Dominaria. I care about the Master sets. The rest of the stuff, like, I'm happy they exist, because there's people that really care about them. But it's not too many products for me personally because I'm not going to buy them or pay a significant right. amount of attention to them. So I think I think it's okay that there's so many of those. There's 10% of people that are going to love Explorers of Ixalan, and if it's worth it financially for Wizards to make something for that 10%, then go for it. Yeah, to piggyback on that a little bit, I, I do agree. Like There needs to be more sets than just the tournament grind or the spikes or what have you, whatever you want to call that. But I think, you know, if you have different, you know, like these out-of-the-box RPG sets, these dual decks, there's different avenues for people not only that just enjoy that as players, but for new players to kind of get into the game. And that was kind of one, just really quickly, that was one point that we kind of missed when we talked about the MMORPG. And we got a lot of comments about that, and I do agree that it might not be you know, World of Warcraft successful, but there needs to be other avenues to kind of pull into the game. And some for some people, that's an MMORPG. So does it affect me as much? And will I buy them or personally play these games? Like the MMORPG? No, but they need to exist. And like said Seth, or like Seth said, rather, uh, they there aren't a lot of products when you look at it because if, if you're not going to buy them, that there really isn't that much. If they don't pertain to you. All right. Uh, quick goldfishing segment. Yeah. <laughs> because of the MTG MMO, I did a very bad thing this weekend. I started playing Final Fantasy XIV. Oh, oh, oh God. No. Save me. I used to play Eleven <laughs> Hardcore. Save me now. But... <laughs> Are you fully sucked back in? Uh, it's, it's awakening things I don't want to be awakened. <laughs> It's 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 killing all my free time, guys. I need help. I need intervention already. <laughs> all right, let's move on to fish mail. We're keeping it slim this week, so we're only doing a couple fish mail because we don't want this podcast to go super long. So uh, if we don't get to your question this week, try again next week. Uh, but you can send them to the hashtag MDGFishmail uh, on Twitter. Uh, so first question from Bruno Alzugeyer. Uh, when you guys play MDG for fun, what formats and decks do you prefer? Uh, I probably mostly play modern for fun, and I play a, all different decks, but usually something either controlling or combo-y when I'm playing for fun. Um, I play commander. Uh, I actually kind of am dabbling into popper, but I also, uh, it's kind of like weird. Uh, a, couple, a friend and I came up with this. I have a lot of just garb, like just stuff, just hanging out. We took like literally just stacks of miscellaneous cards and made decks out of them. It was actually really fun. Uh, so I don't know like what to call that. I'm gonna call it stacks for now because we literally took like giant stacks of just like trash bulk stuff, and then just he took one and I took one and we made a deck out of it. It was actually really fun. Yeah, when I play for fun, it's usually Commander. You see my decks in Commander Clash, they're all pretty dumb. Uh, when I play Modern, it's all serious business. There's no fun, right? It's like optimal lines and stuff. <laughs> but Commander is like, whatever, I can do whatever I want, it doesn't matter. And so for, for, to me, like the casual formats, like Commander, uh, where you have fun, and then the tournament formats, like Standard and Modern, is like serious business. Right? There's no fun in those formats. Uh, next question... 
from uh, Rops007. Wizards just killed magic duels in the middle of the set. No warning, no refund, no sorry. What do you think? So we didn't talk about this last week. Yeah. But they basically said, there's no hour of devastation. We're shutting down magic duels. Sorry, GG, and that's it. No, no, they didn't announce the next product. They didn't announce a transition plan. They didn't even give ample warning. So what do you guys think about this? And uh, what... What is your thought towards Magic Online if this is how Magic Duels is treated? I mean, it could happen to Magic Online the same way. I don't think they're going to do that because there's obviously an economy involved. But I I think it was a little unfortunate that they shut down Magic Duels just like that. I think that's a little crummy. But um, while some people do really enjoy that, I just don't think it was successful. Yeah, I think for me, the big takeaway is they just could have handled it better. I think announcing it further in the future, like after, I don't know, announce it during the winter, after Amoncat, we're no longer going to be supporting it or whatever. The downside is, from their perspective, then you're not going to keep putting money into it because you know that's going to happen, so I can understand. But it does feel a little a little shady and wrong. And as someone who invests money in magic digital stuff, it is a little troubling because that's always, I think it's super unlikely, but that's always the fear in the back of your mind. If you put a ton of money into magic online, that someday wizards could just be like, all right, this isn't worth it anymore. Sorry. (laughs) Like we're done. Yeah. Like wizards pretty much doesn't know how to do anything besides makes card games because it's just like so bad. Like, do you think these players are then going to pick up Paper Magic after you kind of, like, screwed them like that? Are they going to pick up Magic Online? Like, they could have very easily made it much nicer, right? Like, oh, you know, here's a new product you can go to. We'll, we'll give you some kind of migration strategy. Have a free Magic Online account, right? That normally costs $10, but shouldn't, right? So they, they could have did basically anything to keep these players, right? If you're interested in Magic... You know, like, they could have sent them, like, a free fat pack or something, right? Like, here, play the paper game, we're sorry, right? And so they didn't do any of that, and uh, I don't know, this is really bad. Like, we basically slapped these players in the face, and those players are probably not going to play Paper Magic, because why would you support this product that gave you the feels bads, right? So, so I don't know. It's just poor, poor marketing, and... That's kind of on par for Magic Digital. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say here. Uh, last question from Palazzo47. What podcasts, if any, do you listen to or recommend? I'm going to take this as MTG or non-MTG because <laughs> it's not very specific. Um, I don't really listen to many other than Magic related, but there's a ton of great ones out there. I mean... Uh, Magic the Amateuring, uh, Hypecast, you have Commanderin, all those Commander uh, podcasts, you have Masters of Modern, Um, there's a lot of great ones out there. As far as Magic, the main one I catch every week or try to is Magic Mike Cast with Evan Irwin and Ruben Bressler and Aaron Campbell. So I try, to, one. I try to catch that one every week. I don't listen to a ton of other ones. As far as non-Magic, Serial uh, and S-Town are super good. And lately I've been listening to a podcast, uh, My Dad Wrote a Porno, which is exactly what it sounds some 60 year old guy who uh decided to get into erotic literature and his son found out about it and now reads chapters of this horrible (laughs) uh horrible book on his podcast every week and it's it's actually pretty hilarious yeah i don't listen to any podcast whatsoever because i work from home i don't have a commute and i have like no reason to listen to podcasts (laughs) Uh, but i did listen to serial on seth's suggestion i really like that but yeah uh, so that's all our fish meal for this week. So if we missed your question, send them to me again next week when we have more time. Because this week we just had way too much stuff to cover. All right. Um, thanks for everyone for the fish meal. That is going to wrap it up for this podcast. Uh, join us again for the super secret podcast uh, coming very soon. So, uh, gentlemen, anything final thoughts? Nope. All right. We'll see you very soon. So this is going to be the Goldfish Crew signing out. We will see you uh, very soon. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Momentarily.